Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. Today's video is a little bit different than what I usually do. I've mentioned in several of my grocery hauls that I make our dog's food and I've had several people ask me to share how I do that. So that's what I'll be doing today. I'll be showing you how I make our dog's food and then I'll also be sharing a quick and easy dog treat recipe with you. Before we get into the recipes, I do wanna make a quick disclaimer. I am not a vet and I am not a pet nutritionist. What works for our dog may not work for yours. So make sure that you discuss any changes to your pet's diet with your vet before you make those changes. And one last thing real quick before I get into the recipes, I've had a few requests to share pictures of Happy, so I will pop a couple up on the screen. He is six years old. We adopted him four years ago. From what we know, he's part Yorkie and part Shih Tzu. He has a little underbite, which we love, and his name definitely fits his sweet little personality. He is such a sweet and loving dog. He loves to snuggle. He has just been such a blessing to us. When we first got him, we started feeding him the same food that his previous owners had fed him, but we noticed with Within a couple months that shortly after eating he would get really really sick and so we tried different things with uh, you know speaking with his vet and we finally made the decision to start making his food at home uh, instead of buying it at the store so that's why I started doing his homemade food it is a time commitment it is a financial commitment that's something to keep in mind if you're considering switching to making your dog's food at home for us it's worth it because since I switched him to the homemade food about a year ago he has not got sick once, but it might not be right for you or your circumstances. For his food, I do not have a set recipe that I use. I switch it up every week or two and I just use whatever meat I have found on sale the previous week and whatever vegetables I can get at a good price. So on this particular week, I have some ground beef here and then I'm going to use some peas and carrots and some sweet potatoes. Now this week I'm using frozen, but you can use fresh. I use fresh as well. I also have a zucchini and some spinach. Now you definitely wanna make sure that again, you check with your vet. There are certain fruits and vegetables that dogs just cannot have. And there are certain proteins that dogs you know, can have, but maybe they should have in moderation. So again, just do research and check with your vet. To get started, I have my ground beef in a skillet. I'm going to brown that until it is cooked all the way through. And if there's extra fat on that, you'll wanna make sure to drain that off. While that's cooking, I'm going to get started on my vegetables. First, I'll start with the zucchini. I have washed it really well. I'm not going to peel it. There's a lot of nutrients in the skin, but you can peel it if you would like. Happy's a smaller dog, so I'm going to cut this into small pieces. And then I'm going to chop up this spinach. And like I mentioned before, I like to switch this up every week or two. Again, as long as you're making sure you're avoiding certain foods like garlic, onions, grapes that dogs just cannot have, you can really play around with this. I've used peas, carrots, green beans, uh, sweet potato, broccoli, spinach, apples, blueberries, and then for the proteins, I've used uh, ground beef, pork, turkey, chicken, lamb is really good. Uh, it's good for them and Happy really loves the lamb. I've used kidney beans. I've hard boiled eggs and chopped those up and added it to his food. Uh, I've used chicken breast. So I just boil those until they're cooked all the way through and then dice them up pretty finely. And another thing that I like to do from time to time is I will take one of the other ground meats like ground turkey, for example, and then I'll get some chicken livers or chicken hearts and I'll boil the chicken livers or chicken hearts until they're really, really tender and chop them up really finely and add them to his food. I like to use these meat choppers to chop up the meat while it's browning, and I don't add any seasonings to this at all. Now, I know for us humans, we got to have our seasonings, but not for the pups. And just a quick note, I do give Happy a daily supplement that our vet recommended. Dogs are just like humans. There are certain vitamins and minerals and nutrients that they need in order to be healthy. And so when you are buying store-bought dog food, they put those ingredients into the dog food. But when you're making the homemade dog food, they won't necessarily be getting all of that. So again, just discuss that with your vet. But he does get that supplement to make sure he's getting everything he needs in a day. And you probably already know about this tip, but I just wanted to share it in case. To drain any fat from meat when I cook it, what I do is take some aluminum foil, place it over a bowl, and then I take my strainer, put it on top of the foil, empty my meat into there, allow the fat to drain off, and then remove the strainer with the meat, and then you're left with this fat on the foil. Just let that sit for a couple of hours. The fat will harden, crumple up the foil, and then throw it away.
Once my meat is cooked all the way through and I've drained it, I'm going to add it back to the skillet. Then I'm going to add in my vegetables. So I have the sweet potatoes. I just microwave these according to the package instructions. Then I'm going to add in my peas and carrots. I don't cook the peas and carrots ahead of time. They're so small, they warm up while everything else is warming up. I'm then going to add in my chopped up spinach and zucchini and stir that together and cook that for about, I mean, it depends on what vegetables you put in here and how big you cut them, but you really just wanna make sure that all of the vegetables are cooked all the way through. Once that happens, I'm going to set this to the side and allow it to cool completely. And then what I do is I place this into a storage container. You wanna keep it in the refrigerator. And then we feed Happy twice a day. Again, check with your vet to see, you know, how much you should be feeding your dog. You can also pre-portion these out and stick them in the freezer in little sandwich bags and then just pull it out the night before and allow it to thaw in the refrigerator and then give it to them the next day. And here is Mr. Happy enjoying his food. Now, out of all the things that I've given to Happy so far, he has only disliked one thing, and those were green beans. I put green beans into his food one batch, and he did not like them at all. Was not a fan. I would go into the kitchen, and he ate everything else, but he would not touch those green beans. They would be in his bowl, all over the floor. So dogs are just like humans. They have dislikes and likes just like we do. So you'll learn what your dog likes and what he does not prefer. Next up, I'm making peanut butter coconut oil treats. This is really quick and easy to do. I make these for Happy maybe every few months and he really likes them. The ingredients are just a few. You'll need some peanut butter, coconut oil, and then I like to add in a little bit of cinnamon and turmeric, but those are optional. You don't have to add that. To get started, I have this small saucepan over about medium to medium low heat. I believe the recipe says to use a double boiler, but I've never done that. I always just use the saucepan and it turns out just fine. So to this saucepan, I'm going to add in the coconut oil, the peanut butter, and then just a little bit of the turmeric and cinnamon. Like I said, you don't have to add the turmeric or cinnamon if you do not want to. I'm going to whisk that together and allow that to cook low on, until the peanut butter and coconut oil are melted. I will include the recipe for this in the description box below that has the amounts. Now, I cut the recipe into a third. I believe the recipe calls for a cup of peanut butter and a cup of coconut oil, but that makes a lot of treats. So I use a third of a cup of peanut butter and a third cup of coconut oil. Here I have two of these little silicone ice cube trays. You can get these at Walmart or different stores. I got these on Amazon. I'm just going to take the coconut and peanut butter mixture and place them into each little cube. I have this on a cookie sheet just to make it easier to get it in and out of the freezer. You're going to want to freeze these for a, a couple of hours until they're nice and solid. Once they're nice and solid, I'm going to pop them out of the little silicone tray, and then I'm going to place these into this cute little jar. I got this at the Dollar Tree, but you could just use any container. You definitely want to keep these in the refrigerator because the coconut oil, as it comes to room temperature, they'll start to melt. And here is the little treat. They are so cute, and like I said, Mr. Happy really enjoys this treat. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.